Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. Exciting times we are in. Oh, it's so fun. Yes, absolutely. It is fun. We were doing some cleaning after um, clients as we had people for energy work. Again, that's our primary thing is we are energy workers, uh, Reiki master teachers, pranic healers, uh, qigong, you name it. We've gone down many rabbit holes when it comes to energy. And uh, absolutely, that is what we are. But we also view ourselves as teachers and we also do think of ourselves as correspondents of a sort here on planet earth trying to bring people the bigger picture of what's going on we are and you know we try to bring understanding to the unseen absolutely so we were just talking about this earlier and now bobby kennedy jr has announced he's going to address the nation live on friday trump's also going to have an event in phoenix on friday as well they're both going to be in phoenix Phoenix. And look Here. look at how this taps into this video. Phoenix, Phoenix is is a resurrected bird of sorts, yes. right? Oh, yes. Yeah. So what's going to happen? Well, we only got a couple days to see. It should be uh, interesting. And even though it's all a script, it's fun to see you know, the script play, play out. As long as nobody would get hurt. And that's what we wish was the case. Instead of you know everything that's going on in this crazy, crazy system. It is a crazy system. Here's a crazy uh, Ozempic linked to higher risk of thoughts of not wanting to be on the 3D plane anymore. So this is a, a study uh, that was done. 45% higher risk of these type of negative thoughts compared to other uh, alternatives out there. You know, when you look at these things like anti being depressed, you know, these things all carry a lot of weight to them and if you look at them and really look at the side effects when you really look at what clinical studies show it boggles my mind that anybody is on any of them it really really does um you know it i understand it's not easy to get off things once you're on them and so you know again strive for being as clear-minded as possible these things open gateways to realms you don't want to go down. Well, you, they do, and they're very difficult to deal with. And it's been my experience, and I don't want anyone to take any of my information as any medical advice whatsoever, but I can speak to my own experience. And I, I was on, they did try many things to try to kind of lasso in my brain, try to get me to control my brain, which I couldn't because I am what I am. And I didn't understand that at the time. But, you know, so many of these are set up so that when you're taking them and you try to get off of them, you know, the side effects, things like seizures, I mean, they're pretty big and major headaches and, you know, just heart attack, death. It, it, once you get on them, they're really horrible. And I can tell you something else from my experience. If I had known the spiritual implications of changing myself and my my body and my soul and my spirit changing in this world chemistry. my chemistry everything changing changes that's normal that's natural it's it's okay and if you're in a bad situation and you're supposed to be sad then you're going to be sad until you fix that you know if you have a life situation that is really bad for you 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 cannot take a pill to try to avoid that you must 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 address it the pill will numb you it will you know it, it they're also known to be um really bad for the brain i mean neurotoxins seriously so what they do is they go in there and they start drilling holes in the part of the brain that make you care so after a while you go on these things and you just don't care about anything you turn numb you turn void Plus, you're stuck on them, and this was my experience. So I've been working on healing my brain for years and years and years, and I, I believe if, I, if I'd if i had known, looking back, I would have just gone through Dark Night of the Soul, if I'd have known, you know, but I didn't. I didn't. I was in a lot of pain. I was in a lot of trouble. I was in a lot of turmoil. I'm very unusual anyway, and I had tons and tons of doctors working on me, and this is my story. So I just would encourage people, please look into mind body breath understand if you are sad 
try to find the reason you're sad. It could be dark night of the soul, but look deeper before you turn in this direction. Absolutely. You know, again, it just delays what is inevitable, and that's facing the emotions. We need to face the emotions. And this is something that we don't see really in uh, allopathic medicine like you would see if you went and spoke to a, a naturopath, for instance, or somebody that was more holistic. Uh, and here you see a YouTuber who was pushing something uh, that happened, you know, and a cure, a supposed cure, died suddenly of, you know, the usual. Yeah, you guys get the picture. You know, there's innumerable people that have left this realm in the last four years, especially in the last year. I do think this is uh, going through the roof right now. And I think um, we haven't seen the real peak of this yet. And it's all about the system. And you have to say this. This is a, a soldier in Ukraine. What the heck is he doing? What is he doing? Why is he wear, wearing one of these bird masks? A plague mask? You know, this gets us down a very, very interesting, interesting, fascinating rabbit hole. Uh, yeah. Oh, by the way, Elon is ready and willing and able to serve. Department of Government Efficiency. Hmm, dodge. It's pretty dodgy. Yes, dodgy bloke right there. Uh, yeah, okay, Elon, we'll, we'll wake up, we'll wait, uh, wait up for you to catch up. And yes, the, the U.S. and the entire world is going through a transformation, and, and many pointed out when we talked about, gosh, could they ever nominate Elon? Well, it's, it's not part of the U.S. law that would allow him, since he's not a naturalized citizen, but then, of course, you know, Big Barry O, <laughs> you know, that situation. And even even uh, Kamala Harris, again, uh, is she really able to run? Well, she's running or, you know, again, uh, they're they're put up there by their parties as the figureheads, obviously. But the take is that the system's going to change. So at some point he may be, you know, the world ruler. Who knows? But let's go back to those guys with the crazy masks. Looks like these guys are ready to kick some kick some ass and, and take names later. Why in the world did people wear these things? This is an authentic 16th century plague doctor mask preserved on display at the Deutschen yes, German <laughs> Museum of Medical History. Uh, why? Well, I mean, I know what they tell us, and I'm going to share that with you. But why did they really wear these masks? We were um, actually, uh, we had Lucian Aurelius going in the background. He is uh, another one that's kind of like, he's got a smaller channel, but kind of like John Levy going in the background. And he started on the topic of, uh, he called it the others, non-human entities that... Um, were on the planet at various times, different sightings, uh, you know, talking about different uh, alien abduction things. And, you know, I just had that in the background while we're moving things and cleaning. And then he started talking about the plague doctors. And I said to Cindy, said, that was horrifying. Can you imagine why would people at a time of death like the Black Plague? And again, keep in mind, so many sightings of UFOs, so many cases of people saying the cloud formations were strange strange clouds strange smells and then people dropping like flies this happens throughout our, the entirety of our history it does it happens especially a lot in the middle ages or the dark ages or medieval times and i was saying why would they dress like that i mean it's terrifying to people to see this is one of the creepiest costumes you could imagine at a time when people were inconsolable and terrified about the plague and you got the doctors going around dressed like this why in the world would they do this you know as, as he's wielding a scalpel here white hat well this is what they say you know uh, the hat identified them as the doctor Okay, a scalpel for opening, you know, the postules, the pustules that, that came out. Um, a pomander, which looks like what we put 
uh, church tea in. Yeah, and that's the case. This was uh, worn on the neck with aromatic herbs and substances. It's supposed to scare off the plague. Garlic, bunch of garlic. Yeah, protection against vampires. Well, our garlic is very powerful. Oh, garlic is great. You know, if you're having an infection and we know one of our family members is definitely not feeling well and I did suggest to them garlic, you know, take that in. Take a little tiny dose to start to make sure you tolerate it okay. And if you do, take more. Take two or three times a day. A big cloak and tucked in under the neck and stretched to the floor to hide as much of the body surface as possible. Uh, They also often would coat all the clothing with fat or wax believe the chance of infection from sick uh, bugs basically interesting there primitive mask in the form of a bird's beak at that time it seemed to many that the plague spread because of spoiled air it was believed that the mask in, in the form of a bird would repel the plague from the sick person and bring it to the doctor's attire it was believed that the eye masks of red glass made the doctor immune to the disease. That just sounds stupid. The beak of the mask was filled with fragrant medicinal herbs to protect it from miasma and from the stench, and also could carry, which could also carry the plague. By crane measure, the herbs dulled the smell of the non-corpse corpses, the murders of the bursting bubbles of the victims of the plague. Yes, not a pleasant time. The cane for self-defense and also uh, examining the patients and then fishermen's wanderlings underneath. Again, they were trying to cover up as much as they could of the actual body. Um, Yeah, pretty, pretty interesting, pretty interesting choice. Kind of creepy. Oh, very, very creepy. And, you know, yes, I think they were the stuff of nightmares. But what, what Cindy got whoa i was like okay stop we are making a video right now because she she got some interesting info from the guides about these plague doctors um mm, yeah and it, it's just fascinating but to me it makes perfect sense these 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 beings were brought in uh, again, to examine and see how bad things are going. In these times, it is said that, you know, in some areas, you know, a third, a quarter, a third of the population would be lost or more. And, you know, historically, it, it, there are some spots that lost half of the population. This was huge. And the plagues seemed to persist. Um, and they would come, again, usually with signs. Oh, yeah. Again, the clouds. The strange lights in the sky, uh, some substance. Sometimes people would notice uh, that there would be more than one sun in the sky again. You know, everything that we have kind of going on at this point in time, basically. So the thing that stunned me was that Cindy shared. (laughs) Well, they're dressing up because they're not human. They're different beings. They're different types of entities. And what they are doing is they're checking to see how well their uh, bio issues are working. And it's really sad. It's really horrible. It's really morbid. But most of them were not human that were coming in that were cloaked. So if I, you know, jumble it up, it's that um, logical bio fair that's war related. Right. It is that logical bio fair that's war related and they're taking notes they're documenting they're wanting to know how well it worked and they can't show themselves because at this point there is some type of a treaty in place and we have a whole nother video about that but these beings are not able to actually show themselves show themselves as humans so most of them and this is the dialogue that's going on through my head to through the whole video you know the guides are telling me well they're not human they're just not human and it's it's not a habit of me to blurt this information out unless someone asks but i'm getting better you know i'm getting better at sharing my information and i know you guys understand that dialogue some of you that i work with very closely understand that constant dialogue of the guides talking to you but it takes a while sometimes to get used to spitting it out because we're not always in situations where we are able to tell what the guides are saying 
Absolutely. Um, you know, again, to take a step back, Cindy uh, is somebody that if you've ever seen like John Edwards, where he's working uh, in a crowd and you might be thinking cynically, oh, there's plants and he already knows this woman lost her husband and this and that. Yeah, there are people like that. But but the reality is uh, I have yet to see anybody that she can't locate on the other side. This is just, you know, part of who she is. And many other people out her out there that are like her too, and this is really why the system um, created so many quote unquote mental hospitals for people that heard voices and things. No, no, these people are simply fully functioning humans, not like the most of us uh, that can't automatically see these things. But that again is is that's a Kali Yuga thing and we're we're leaving a Kali Yuga so these abilities are going to be had by more and more people um, that stay free and clear of the system oh, you know I really wish I was as good as John Edwards I, I do get confirmations but not like him but I can I understand the information and the data that he's getting in and he's reading it from a, a, a certain area in the room and he's very very good but I get this running dialogue as well I'm just not as good as him but he does I mean it's very real it's nothing that's planted at all no, uh, absolutely, and we've had many people that were amazed uh, by how accurate she was throughout the years that we've been doing this. So when you look to uh, these representations of various Anunnaki beings, Sumerian deities, um, that I would say in many cases these are Asuras, and we were talking about a certain category of Asura, again from the Hindu terminology, uh, Sora is is a, a being that's in service to self and again they are the ones that came to the planet took over the planet uh, and basically put in the control system that we have in place right now and so that draconian control system these different representations of some of them because some are reptilian some are bird-like some are very very much human and are really, in, in effect, hybrids of, of varying degrees. These are obviously bird-like ones, and there's many depictions of these. And it's not just in Mesoamerica. We see it in, uh, I should say, it's not just in Mesopotamia. We see it in Mesoamerica as well. In fact, again, this is something that we see all around. Uh, you know, all these beings are basically categorized as Anunnaki, those that come from elsewhere other realms to come here and you know again there have been beings that are more benevolent that have fallen under that Anunnaki label but not Enlil not Enki not Marduk not all the ones that we see uh, in these tales again there are many beings that in ages way before that came uh, to our realm and shared with us all sorts of knowledge of how to live in a peaceful manner in a symbiotic way with the planet the, the structure the power structure we're under now is not symbiotic at all it, it's destructive so when we look to all these beings again some of them uh, are clearly you know as you look at this one in the bottom right you know obviously there's giants uh, and you see again they're on thrones they give us the whole concept of kinghood this is again something that we get from them and royalty and bloodlines this is all what's important to them and they've given it to us and we see some are very very much humanoid bird-like beings many depictions uh there are many many depictions that show this so perhaps you know the reason why they were dressed like birds is because there is actually bird-like beings underneath the costumes and they couldn't have humans understanding uh, that these were extraterrestrials they were not from here and it's interesting to see that many of these beings are associated with plagues even even Apollo uh, which is known as the ancient Greek god of the sun these beings took on the positions of beings that went before them that were actually more benevolent and took over their place uh, they took over the place of what we might even call natural forces of this matrix. 
as when Cindy Remote viewed L. And when you look at the Bible, they refer in the Bible to God or that which we would call God or gods as either L in the singular, Elohim in the plural, or Yahweh. And so when you go and you feel into the energy of Yahweh, very dark, uh, very uh, warlike, very aggressive, singular entity, very lower vibrations. When you feel into L, actually what Cindy kept getting was the feeling of a cloud, like some sort of consciousness in a cloud. And it's curious that you will see depictions of God in a cloud, uh, a humanoid figure floating in the cloud. Well, it is some sort of creative force uh, that is part of the natural matrix. It's, it's not the creator of this universe itself, but it is part of a natural order. And then that term Elohim literally means mighty ones, uh, or it, it can mean judges, or those that control uh, humanity. And again, it's in the plural, and that's the, the first references we see in Genesis is, is in the plural. But uh, Apollo, again, Greek god of the sun, music, po prophecy, and arts, it's also, is also known as one of the most feared plague gods in the classic world. Absolutely. And there's many of them, as we see as this one that's also known as the jeweled fowl. It's, it's a uh, Aztec god of night and darkness, again, bird-like. Uh, we'll, we'll see many of those, Nergal. Um, this one, Pazuzu, again, uh, this, this was something that was actually ins inspired the exorcist. You know, this is a Babylonian demon of the underworld, Assyrian Babylonian, bird-like, again, kind of reptilian bird-like. It goes on and on, Reshef, uh, which is ancient Egyptian god of plague and war. Um, and one thing you will see is that, again, many of the attributes and positions of older deities are are then taken on by a new newer quote unquote deity and this is really represent representative of the invasion of the planet by the dark forces that we would call asuras uh, which again you can view as the anunnaki that are uh, under the draconian control the reptilian control you know, but not all bird-like beings are, are bad because I have run into uh, the blue avians which have a very warrior-like feel to them and they want to protect humanity. So I just want to put that out there that not all bird ones it's just are bad. It's just kind of weird that there's so many different kind of bird entities that are tied into by a war. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I understand uh, in some eyes, uh, Corey Good has been discredited because of everything that's going on. I think the system knows what the system's doing. And so, you know, in many cases, um, people may start in one direction uh, and get um, threatened or what have you. And then the system will ultimately gain control of them or at least... Um, manipulate them through through threats you know into going down particular routes that can be incriminating and so, you know incriminating to the point where people won't even take any concepts that they spoke of and they'll throw the entire thing out and that's exactly what the system does um, because it did surprise me when when Cindy was saying I can't believe this but blue avians are coming through and I was like are you sure blue avians you know because I had kind of discounted a lot over the years um, and you know but it, they are real and and perhaps that's why you know the system wants to uh, draw so many people in discredit something to the point where you won't uh, even consider it anymore and then you throw the baby out with the bathwater so to speak um, Mothman Mothman's fascinating with that bridge collapse I've been there and Felt the energy there. Um, very, very interesting situation. And the Jersey Devil. If you, you know, we, we've done videos on this and we could do deep dives again in the future. Just wanted to point out oh, there is a wide history when it comes to beings that are quote unquote winged or bird like and having um, a lot of negative attributes, but also positive. Some, again, you can't. 
just lump all beings. And this is what, you know, the fundamentalist mind does is lumps everything into the category of fallen angels and, and, and demons. And that really serves the real demons well. And, and that's what, you know, Mike and I, we look at this information and we understand that the information that is sent out to the masses really needs to be questioned. So that's why we, we drop our belief systems. We drop it first and foremost, and then you go back in and you feel and you psychically pick the information up. And I, I feel that's what makes us different. We are that bridge and we are that... I, I will take in the mass media information, but boy, oh boy, is my filter sharp. I can sense the truth and I, you know, I speak my truth and I'm getting better and better at it. And so many of you guys are there to thank for it. And this little guy is cuteness <laughs> overload. And he says, you know, don't discount the small package. That's right. He's, he's going to take them out. He's going to protect somebody or something. Absolutely. Look forward to your comments, guys. Uh, these are fascinating times and everything is really being revealed. It's all right there. It's all right in front of our faces. As always, thanks for your support. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.